Um, as I said, 30, one of 38 uh, terrorist, terrorist watch list suspects caught at the border. Now this one, this guy in particular, was not caught by the Border Patrol. Um, he, he got away from them, but he was picked up by the Texas Department of Public Safety. So we now have at least 38 of these guys in our custody here. Dana, this is a remarkable story. You have an Iranian national on the terror watch list who was apprehended at our border, one of almost 40 who we've apprehended. And as you say, this wasn't by the feds, this wasn't by the Department of Homeland Security, it was by Border Texas Patrol. law enforcement officer. So thank goodness the state of Texas is at least taking responsibility for its border with Mexico, even if Joe Biden won't take responsibility for policing our border. And, and what really worries me, Dana, is not this one person we caught or, or the almost 40 that we've caught, it's how many have we missed? How many have been able to infiltrate our country without being caught? I worry about the potential for terror attacks, including mass terror attacks on the scale of another 9-11 if we don't secure our border. And there won't have to be a 9-11 commission or anything else to figure out how it happened. It'll be obvious. Our open southern border has posed a grave threat to our national security and the safety of our people. Sir, in just the past four months, we have a number on the number of gotaways that you're referring to. 304,000. Okay, let's go back to the 1st of October. Um, per day, that's almost 2,500. What are they doing? Who are they? We don't know. Yeah, we don't know, Bill. And again, I think it's reasonable to infer that we have allowed many more people on the terrorist watch list to get in and even kind of a normal ratio based on the known gotaways and the ones we've apprehended would uh, suggest because you would assume, I think it's fair to say, that hardened terrorists who have trained overseas to conduct terror attacks are going to be more skillful and artful in evading law enforcement than a poor migrant who's simply trying to enter our country to get a job and pay uh, for expenses for their family back home. So I think this is a grave threat to our national security. It's just one more urgent reason to secure our border now. It seems incredibly unfair as well to the men and women who work in law enforcement, uh, at the border or even in intelligence to put this burden on them because they're responsible to try to make sure that they're catching everything and if we have another attack as you said it'll be kind of obvious what happened but they'll be blamed and the administration doesn't change the border situation and now we also we had a report on monday about the northern border sir and how many people are trying to come across there so we are not covering our bases and I don't know whether people have just forgotten what happened before, but why would someone from Iran on the terror watch list sneak across America, and who might he have been trying to meet up with? Yeah, Dana, I think that's an excellent point. And again, the real uh, threat is who we don't know, who we didn't catch. You'd assume these people, as hardened terrorists, are, are going to be skilled at evading law enforcement. And you say that law enforcement will be blamed, but I, I don't think that's the case, though, Dana. I, I think the blame for our open border lies now and, and for the consequences in the future squarely on, on the doorstep of Joe Biden at the White House. This didn't just happen. It's not an accident. It's not a bad hand that Joe Biden was dealt. Right. It's the deliberate choices he's made all along to stop the enforcement of our border and to allow a national security million risk illegal aliens to enter our country in just two years in his right. tenure. If there's a terrorist attack in this country from someone who crossed our southern border, Joe Biden will be squarely responsible for that attack. We have spent billions. Yep. You hear that, liberals? He got liberals. Take that social media. And there you go. Fake news. You need to know that. You guys need to know that. Hey, fake news. Did you hear that? You're responsible. You are responsible for, for putting both Joe Biden in office. You understand that, Bill? Do you understand that, Bill? Huh? Do you get it now? Do you understand that, boy? Do you understand that, boy? For a moment, because there's another hearing that is happening today. It is about the border, and it's a judiciary committee on the House side, and the chairman of that committee is from Ohio. He's uh, the chairman, of Republican Jim Jordan. Let's listen to him here just a moment ago. Five million. That's the number of illegal aliens encountered by CBP officials just in the time since President Biden took office. 1.7 million, the number of illegal migrants that Joe Biden released into American communities. 2,378,944 
the number of illegal migrants encountered by CBP on the southwest border in 2022. The highest number, the highest number ever recorded in a single year in our nation's history. 251,487, the number of illegal migrants encountered by CBP on the southwest border in the month of December of last year. The highest monthly number ever recorded. 8,100, the average number of illegal migrants encountered per day on the southwest border in the month of December 2022. 717,660, the number of illegal migrant encounters on the southwest border in just the first three months of this fiscal year. 1.1 million, the number of known gotaways who have successfully crossed the southwest border since President Biden took office. 856, the number of migrants who died attempting to cross the southwest border during the past fiscal year. Again, the highest number on record, 98, 98, the number of aliens on the terrorist watch list encountered on our southwest border during fiscal year 2022, yet another record set by the Biden administration. Remember when Mr. Mayorkas testified in front of this committee last Congress and we asked him about the number on that terrorist watch list? Remember asking Mr. Mayorkas, at the time it was only 40 something. We asked him about that number. He said, what's the status of those individuals? And his response, I think, was astonishing to, to every member of the committee, both Republican and Democrat, when he said he didn't know. He didn't know if they were detained. Where they, he didn't know. This year, 38, the number of aliens on that terrorist screening database. Already this year. 193, the number of fentanyl-related deaths in the United States every single day. Dead. Higher than COVID. For Mr. Dunn and the heartache this causes families and communities, this fentanyl problem. These numbers make clear that the Biden administration does not have operational control of the border. Month after There's month, a crisis. After month, we have set records for migrants coming into the country. And frankly, I think it's intentional. I don't know how anyone with common sense or logic can reach any other conclusion. I, it seems deliberate, it seems premeditated, it seems intentional. And as if that's not bad enough, we now learn that the crisis is no longer just confined to the southwest border. Last week, the chief border patrol agent in Vermont tweeted this, quote, in less than four months, Swanton sector's apprehensions have surpassed the combined two prior years. Just in the past four months, more than the two years combined beforehand. Make no mistake, the Biden administration is carrying out its plan. We all heard Secretary Mayorkas sat in front of this committee and said, we are executing our plan on the border. And we all heard President Biden say, we're trying to make it easier for people to get here. Well, they're certainly succeeding in that. Imagine the frustration that our border communities feel when they hear that the damage done to their land and to their businesses the crimes committed by illegal alien trespassers, and the overwhelmed local resources that are all part of their own federal government's plan. Today we will hear about some of the effects of Biden's open border policies on everyday Americans and the communities in which they live. We will hear about dangerous encounters with illegal migrants on private property. We will hear about the devastating effects, as I said earlier, of fentanyl on American families. And we will hear about Mexican smuggling cartels exploiting the open border to terrorize U.S. communities. And the worst part is that none of this had to happen. Yep. Under President Trump, the border was secure. Under President Biden, there is no border. And Americans are paying the price. I now recognize the ranking member, the gentleman. So that was Congressman Jim Jordan. I remember fake. The House Committee. That if we have a terrorist attack happen here, guess what? A fake news media is going to be held responsible. So is social media. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Thank you.